Hey, welcome in everybody to the latest edition of Jeff Packs to the Bank, as we are here to talk about our tale of two cities, Phillies, as they played two seven innings doubleheaders today. And we're not going to talk about the doubleheaders because that would be too meaningless and time consuming. So we're just <laughs> going to talk about the games themselves. And in the first game, we got a Odd performance by Wheeler, because normally you see him dominate, or if he teeters, he starts giving up runs. He actually really battled through after giving up three, and then after that third inning, just kind of hit stride until he came out of the game, which he shouldn't have done. But, you know, obviously he didn't make that decision. Um, But he until he came out of the game, and then he... So he pitched a good game, but what did you think of his performance? Because he started like a little off and then he got it to click in like I told you on the phone like he was also leaving them over the plate and then he all of a sudden was locating better later in the game what did you think of him I thought he pitched excellent I mean he he was dealing from the beginning he, he should have he got out of the first inning without any runs given up if score would have fielded the ball cleanly he would have got the double play they would have been um he would have had two outs and the, the run would have never happened and then same thing, same thing in the next thing. He shouldn't have given up the two runs. For some reason, Quinn was playing pretty far back, and it looked like he misread the ball and tried to save it on, on a diving play, on a diving play in the outfield, and it ended up hitting the ground. And guy gets a single out of it, and then, and then the next batter comes up and hits a home run, and now it's now you give up the three runs. So I mean, personally, I, I really don't think he threw a bad game. Um, I don't think those three runs should have scored. And if you take away those three runs, he. Gives up a zero, and even if, uh, I, and I get it, players misread balls. So yeah. even, if you, even if you do that, say it, you give up two. Still, that that first run shouldn't have happened in the first inning. And either way, he would end up giving up two runs. It would have helped his pitch count. He wouldn't have been near eighty-seven or eighty-six pitches, whatever it was, and he probably could have finished that game. And so personally, I, I got no worries. He, he pitched just like he did in the first game. Got the ground ball, double plays when he needed to. Should have had an extra one, or yeah, should have had that one. Well, he ended up getting one anyway in the first inning. But to me. I, I got no worries. Zach Will went out there and deal just like he did in game one game one of the season for himself. No, yeah, I, I don't have any worries at all. I just was saying he pitched a game that I actually would more like. Like obviously you like to see the guy go out there and do what he did last game every game. Um, but normally that don't happen. Uh so what he did today where he left a few over the strike zone, then located better, I actually like to see because it shows as he ages, like they said on the match, he was getting better at adjusting during the game as he was aging with the Mets, which he, so it seems like that holds true. So I really liked what I saw from him tonight, being able to get better as the game went on. That's also why even with the 80 pitches, I would have left him out there for the seventh inning, but you know, that is what it is. And we've already, I guess, gotten over that because we won that game. Um, so yeah, there, there was just, there was a lot of things. This and the offense goes out, they score 11 runs. You win 11 to seven, um, you got aided by a couple miscues by the Yankees in that top of the um, sixth inning there. Uh, you score a couple unearned runs. Or you just get one unearned run, uh, just like you, they, you gave to them. So that evens out. Um, but overall, no, that sixth inning was good. Finally a breakout inning for the Phillies offense. And I mean, you get six in the sixth and four in the third, and you really just don't see that too often with this offense so far in this early going in the season. So that, that was all good. I mean – We'll get into the second game, but it just makes it makes the first game seem like it was a loss. Like, I mean, and again, we'll get into it, but it's just <laughs> this game already seems like forever ago just because of how did frustrating see, that second game was. Yeah, did you see the um, tweet I put out um, after the game? I put out a tw- I put out a uh, well, I put out a tweet during the game, but I put out one after the game that said, "Well, this day was certainly a tale of two cities for the Phillies." Um, great other than the pen game one, then because of that pen blown game two, this bullpen needs to be fixed and it needs to happen fast. Also, Nola should have went out for the seven. Uh, yeah, I, yeah. Here, I got a stat for everyone. Everyone wants to go out and rip on Gabe Kapler last year. And, yeah, sorry to bring him up, but I, I, this is where I get mad. At, but everyone wants, to, everyone wants to blame him for last year and everything. Well, we'll get this. You have... You have Monday night, Jake Arrieta goes out and pitches five strong innings for as questionable as we thought he was going to be this year. He only gives up th- he gives up three runs to, to the Yankees. He's only at 77 pitches through five. We take him out. Bullpen gives up three more in one inning. Tonight, today, this afternoon, Zach Wheeler, 86 pitches through six innings, takes him out for the seventh inning. Bullpen comes in, four runs in one inning. 
tonight, tonight's second game, Aaron Nola, 86 pitches after six innings. What does he do? Take him out, brings in the bullpen, gives up two runs, and guess what? You lose the game. Again, once again, this isn't a manager issue. This is the way they're going to keep managing it, and for whatever reason, the bullpen's going to come in here. And again, no matter who's managing this club, whether it's Gabe Kapler, Joe Girardi, Charlie Manuel, Larry Boa, I mean, you could throw anyone out there, anyone out there manager-wise, it's not going to change until this bullpen gets fixed. No, no, that's true. That's true. I just think... That's why if I was obviously what I said in our group chat was a joke, I'm not going to run people out there for 100 to 120 pitches every game, but you probably don't want to take them out at 70 something if they think they can still go another in. That's the balancing with it because you know your pen sucks. Even if you want to do the, oh, we should conserve them for later in the season, that doesn't fly because you're only playing 60 games. So you should just keep letting it ride if teams are doing well and we wouldn't be the only team to do that because I see other teams while watching on MLB TV it's not like every team takes out their pitcher at 80 pitches so you could you should have left Noah in for the seventh you should have left Jake in for an extra inning there and you should have left Wheeler was the most um debatable but I still would have left him in I would have just left him in because one you you knew you had a second game in hand, so I don't know why you're trying to go through your bullpen there anyway. Like, if it would have been one thing, if you, you trust the eight-run lead and you um, take them out in the second game because you know you're not playing another game. But you already know you're playing another game, so why not just let uh, Wheeler run? Like, just let him run, get that complete game, and move on and have a full entire bullpen for that second game. And and, th- and this is where I, and this is where I take issue in in. And I get it. The Yankees were on a run in that seventh inning, but you already have two outs. Why are you using Naris? I don't use Naris there unless the tying runs at the plate, or or it's a one run game. Which again, the tying run would be at the plate. I I would have used Hunter in that first game where you could save Naris for the second game because for whatever reason, one one pitch in a game apparently makes you unavailable for the second game, or else they clearly would have used Naris in the second game. So that, that's another reason why I had issue in the first game was because again, I get it, but why are you? And I get, and I guess it's with the whole new dumb rule about the three batter minimum, where if say Hunter comes in and gives up a home run or something, then you're stuck with Hunter because you can't change the pitcher. So that that goes on, and that probably affected his decision there. So he wanted to put in his closer. But again, I don't see how one pitch makes you unavailable for the second game. If that first batter say works him and works him and makes him throw eight to ten pitches, then maybe you can make the argument. But I just don't see how. One pitch can make you unavailable for game two. But I guess let's continue with this first game game in the positives. And this was the offense here, 11 hits, 11 runs. But, I mean, there's still some shaky things. Like, what? Do you, I don't know how to feel about this offense yet. McCutcheon goes over for right, well, two. The goose is the tank, so we just have to establish that. But absolute here, tank. Here's the thing, Him like, and Bryce Harper are best friends now, too. Did you see that? They're here, right here, next to each other in the outfield, buddy, buddy. Here's the I, Honestly, I missed that. But <laughs> here's my thing. I, you called it from the beginning with, with Goslin. I, I wasn't high on him. But here's the thing. I can't get behind him because Girardi clearly doesn't trust him. Even, even when he starts Goslin or whatever. I mean, outside the first game. Like today, game one. Goslin starts the game, goes one for one with an RBI double. What does he do? He pitch hits for him the next time he's up. Game two, game two, all this guy's do is hitting. And what is he doing in game two? He benches him. Like I would I have pinched hit him in that last that back because Neil Walker is not good right handed. I would have started him. Yeah. Oh, I would have started him too, but I also would have pinched hit him in that last. Again, that I wasn't how him coming right in, but you you gotta ride the hot hand, and I don't, I don't know why you. And I get it. It's it's. And I was the same thing. Like, but. I can't get behind a guy that's only going to bat one time if he's not going to trust him. Like, No, Grant, I, that is kind of what he did for the most part last year once everyone came back. It was like he would get bats here and there. Like He was the best pinch hitter in the NL in the last couple months. So it's not like he's being used overly more than he was last year. He's just be starting and then for some reasons coming out. But Joe Girardi also did that to Neil Walker, who he had on his team in 2017. So he has a relationship with already with Phil Goslin 
in the other game, in the one other game where Neil Walker literally batted one time and he's like, yeah, about that. This was the worst decision I ever made. And then he put Phil Gosselin in it. So I don't know. I don't know why we're doing those. T- I, I feel like that was more defensive at that point because Phil's obviously not the best defender. And I guess he wanted to put Diddy in and then move uh, Gene over. But I, that would be my but- guess. I mean, I get that it's late in the game, but that, I mean, if he only has one at bat, that had to be, let's see, that would have been in the, it would have been in the third inning before we even, I don't remember if he let off the inning or whatnot, but that would have been in the third inning they pitched it for him. That's right when you got the four runs, so I, I wouldn't be making a defensive substitution That's when you're down point. three nothing. That's a I good mean, point. It's just in a seven inning game, if you think of it. The third inning would really be what, like the fifth inning in a. No, 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 no. But again, I agree. It would be a defensive replacement if you're winning yeah. the game. But when you're down three nothing, you're not making defensive replacements. No, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know why he really did it to be. I, I don't know if he looked at the other pitcher since it was a bullpen game, and said, yeah. "I don't like Goose against this guy," or what happened there. Like. I, and the other good thing from game one is you're seeing a lot of pitches. You're working the pitcher. The team as a whole works seven walks again in this game, but when you get seven walks, I mean, you're, you're still missing a lot of opportunities there, and that's what's kind of concerning with this this offense still. Yeah, obviously you score 11 runs, which is great, but, um, I mean, that first inning, you get a big zero after getting uh, first and second. The second inning, you get a one-out double from Goslin. You can't get him across the plate. Um, so, again, this, this offense, as good, of it, as good as that game was, they're still leaving runners on, which is still concerning, but, uh, no, overall, you got to be happy with the first game. And I guess going into the day, you expect to split a doubleheader. But they go out, get that first win, which was important. Um, and and I, I I don't know. Overall, yeah, it's a good game. And like you said in your tweet, outside that bullpen, I mean, you couldn't ask for really anything too much better in this first game. No, but Trevor Kelly is so bad. Uh, oh, and, and <laughs> we, I mean, we called each other, and I was like – this game is going to get interesting. I haven't told, like, like you're bringing Austin Davis. What, how does this guy keep surviving? How, how does Austin Davis keep surviving? Minor league time? pitcher of the year, at least I think he was. He was something like that. <laughs> <laughs> well, go back and keep winning those awards then. I don't know. I mean, he didn't prove anything last year. He hasn't done anything this year. Um, I just, please, I, I want to know what this front office and even the manager. I mean, well, yeah, but the, the front office puts I would the much rather out there, have but... Austin Davis and Cole fucking Irvin. What's my phone fell on the ground? My bad, but you know I, would I would much rather, rather have. I would rather Francisco Liriano, the guy they cut not to make the team. I would much rather Francisco Liriano out there. That's a good point because Francisco Liriano can also go two to three innings. But you know, I would rather any of the many relievers out there that would I also there would have rather pitched Morgan. Ball. Yeah, I also would have rather pitched Morgan, who pitched in the second game in that situation, or another. Nah, I gotta like, say Morgan. I mean, when Alvarez. You're runs, when you're or when something. you when you're up eight runs, I'm saving Morgan, Alvarez, and all those guys for the second game because again, I wouldn't have used Hunter. No, 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 no. I meant I meant when um. Kelly came in like once it was not like oh, once yeah. not shaky, you could have put in somebody better. Not when Davis came in for Davis, you could have put in a better left hander. And really, Kelly got lucky that one ball went uh, foul because that was that should have been a three run bomb. He also got lucky, wasn't that Trevor Kelly that got the lucky call with the strike? Oh, uh, yeah, I believe so. Yeah, because he struck the guy out and they made the switch. That yeah. was the other thing. Kelly strikes him out, just leave him in. Like, he strikes him out, gets two outs. It's the tie run still not at the plate. Just leave him in at that point. Like, if you weren't going to go to the save, like, first and second, nobody, or first and second, one out, the two out, the situation isn't changing. So just leave him in at that point. Again, if he gives it the home run, then you bring in the Hunter and Ayers. But, like, I don't know. I just didn't. You're still up, you're still up, uh, 11 to 7 at that point. And, um, I'm blanking. He struck. Who would he struck out? He would have struck out. He struck out Mike Ford. So, I mean, they're at the bottom of the lineup. So, I don't know why. Just, I don't know. Leave Kelly in at that point. And again, say say he does give up a home or he makes it 11 10. Then you bring in Naris to face the 8 9 hitters of that Yankees team, which I got faith in Naris getting those guys out. So, 
Trust me, I believe in. I, I like Girardi overall, but he. I'm not gonna lie, he's made a couple questionable decisions early on this season, and maybe it's the whole weird season's kind of throwing him off and everything. But it, it doesn't cut it any short with how frustrating it's been. No, no, it definitely, it definitely doesn't. Um, I mean, Trevor Kelly also is one of those guys you talk about stats deceiving. Um, he has a zero ERA after the games he's pitched because all of the runners he's allowed to score were inherited runners for somebody else. So he's really uh, dodging that whole ERA blowing up. Um, But in game two, we had exactly what we were getting at, our bullpen stinking, because Noah destroyed them with 12 strikeouts. And had very good movement on his fastball, very good movement on all his pitches. Uh, Also on his curveball, it looked the best it has in really camp and uh, obviously all season because his first start wasn't the greatest. So, I mean, Noah looked really good today. What did you think about him before we get into the bullpen blowing up? Oh, you could have asked for anything better from Aaron Noah. I mean, six strikeouts, or excuse me, six innings pitch, ties a career high with 12 strikeouts in the outing. I mean, he's only at he's only at 86 pitches, and, and you pull him again. I don't understand that, but I mean, Noah Noah made one bad pitch, and it was the home run to Luke Voigt, and I I can't remember exactly what the exact pitch was, whether it was the changeup or not. Um, but it, I mean, he left it up there, and mistakes are gonna happen. But I mean, not, you, you gave up one run. I mean, you can't ask for anything better. I think he gave up two or gave up three hits total. Um, so outside that one home run, he really dominated the rest of the game and. Yeah, he lost he lost command some in the fifth inning, but I thought the sixth inning was really sharp, and I'm seeing different stuff on Twitter and stuff about him getting tired and everything. But again, the fifth inning, yeah, it was a little shaky. But the sixth innings, he to, sixth inning to me, he didn't show much signs. He threw, um, he threw three total balls in the whole inning. Uh, got the second batter out, and Aaron Judge first pitch swinging, fooled him on that, and then the second guy, Glaber Torres, three pitch three pitch at bat strikes him out. Uh, you get past those two guys, yeah, you're facing Stanton to lead off the inning, but I mean, Stanton did not look good at all uh, against all that on the night. Struck out against him the first time. Uh, a weak pop up, didn't even get into the dirt in the infield to Segura. So I, I trust him in that situation. Then you get the the Luke Voigt, who again, it was a mistake pitch. Um, I'm taking Nola most of the time against uh, Luke Voigt. Struck him out the second at bat, and then you're gonna face Gary Sanchez, who. Well, even if, if one guy gets on, then you're going to face Gary Sanchez, who's two for twenty something on the two for twenty six, I believe, on the year with fifteen strikeouts. Like Aaron Ola could have got through that inning. Yeah, no, no, I agree. I mean, our bullpen's not the best, so if your guy looks pretty good, he should have went back out. Well, not the best is an understatement. Our bullpen stinks. Um, so yeah, Aaron Ola should have went back out. So. I mean, also, obviously, the offense that was so plentiful in game one in a bullpen game for the Yankees was not plentiful in game two with who we expected to get our lone RBI single in Andrew Knapp being the only guy to supply the offense. That's exactly what we all expected going in. Um, And we also all expected Neil Walker to be the guy scoring. Um, So what did you think of the bats not looking too good in game two all of a sudden when that's a game you think they would look better because you're facing a bullpen game and a 25 year old that's only been decent so far in the majors to start the game yeah i mean this this team they're not they're not taking good at bats they're swinging out of their shoes when they don't have to they're way over anxious and it's quite clear honestly with the whole situation um, that they're they're just they're, they're not comfortable. It doesn't look like no matter who goes out and pitches, whether it's Garrett Cole, whether it's a bullpen game, whether it's J. A. Happ. I mean, again, how you're aided by seven walks in that game in that first game um, from J. A. Happ. Uh, I forget what the Phillies ended with that game, but this, this team's being aided by the walks. Um, and then again, you're not. I mean, you go down this list. Adam Hayes was swinging the bat well, obviously. He goes one for three. Um, he's not hitting 538 on the year through early, early going. Hoskins go for 0 for two. Listen, I'm a big Hoskins fan, but he's got to start him better than 158. Um, Bryce Harper, 222. 
Gregorius, 300. Segura, 182. Uh, Bruce slash McCutcheon. Bruce goes is 286. McCutcheon, 0. 0.056. Kingery, 100. Walker, 250. And then Andrew Knapp obviously plays one game on the year, 500. Uh, JT, I believe, hitting 300 on the year. Um, so, obviously, you, you only got a handful of guys swinging the bat well right now. And Phil Gosselin's one of them at 625, I believe, after that first game. And JT, 300. And guess what? They're two of your hottest hitters. They're not playing that second game. And don't get me wrong. Obviously, everyone understands bench. I mean, you're not going to catch two games in a doubleheader. So I understand not playing him. Maybe you DH him, let Hoskins play first, or you take out the struggling bat. You, you leave uh, JT in there, DH, and you give Hoskins the day, uh, second game off and let him just have a mental second game or whatever, trying to figure things out. Again, 158, or, or one of those other guys struggling. I mean, it, we want to blame the bullpen, and trust me, I'm the first one that's going to sit here and blame the bullpen, but when you only score one run, you're not going to win many games. Um, and especially, you really think you would have won this game. I mean, even if you take away all the stats, you go into this game right before first pitch, and you see Aaron Nola versus a bullpen game, you're going to expect to win that game the majority of the time. But no, th- this offense, it's concerning at this point. Um, I- I'm sure you feel the same way. Correct me if, if you feel different, but... I mean, these guys got to start waiting back on pitches and start working really good at bats more, um, even if you're not going to draw the walk. I mean, you only walk one time in the second game, so you don't get help that in any such there. And you only get three hits. That's, what, four base runners in total against the bullpen game? I mean, wouldn't it be nice to, to be like the Yankees there and be able to throw that much and yeah. call it whatever you want with the starting pitcher? Say he is a starter well, leave him out. <laughs> the bullpen still comes in and throws uh, – it would have been – Five and five and a third scoreless innings. I mean, I'll do anything for five innings of scoreless baseball from a bullpen at this point. That's true. But I was going to say, we had seven walks in game one. We then replaced that with seven strikeouts in game two. So. Yeah. And, I mean, listen, it, it's going to happen time to time. But right now, it's been all year. I mean, you go through that Marlins series, you scored, I mean, you scored what that first game? Yeah, the Marlins are what four and one now. One of the best teams right? in the game. Yeah, right. that huge scoreless streak uh, <laughs> with their pitching staff today, unbelievable. I mean, I know they beat the Marlins, but for them to go out and or they beat the Orioles, but again, four and one now. First, I mean, they're five and one after both those wins. Um, oh, yeah. Kind of brought brought Baltimore down to earth there after uh, the sweep of Tampa Bay. But I mean, you look at the guys that struck out: Segura, Harper, uh, Scott King. I mean. But what's going on with Kingery at this point? I mean, the guy, he came and catch up to a 90, 93, 94 mile no. per hour fastball at the heart of the plate. It's not even like he's chasing pitches left and right. It's they're right down the middle. I mean, you couldn't ask for a better pitch at times. And I mean, Hoskins strikes down the third inning, and I don't know if that ball was ever an inch over the ground. I mean, these guys just aren't seeing the ball right at yeah. this point. And I mean, listen, we all love the, the I mean, obviously, starting wise. The price signing was great for the starting pitchers. Obviously, it's not there for the bullpen yet. But, I mean, we all love the hitting coach signing, but right now it's non-existent, it seems like, outside a couple guys. I mean, yeah. to me, which it sounds odd to say because of the amount of walks. So I don't mean in terms of pitches, but when I say patience, I mean patience letting the ball get to you. Like, they're, they're swinging way too early. They're way out in front of pitches. They're not. They're not – they're not hitting the ball to where it's being pitched. They're trying to pull everything. Like if you, you got to wait back and hit it to where, to where the ball is being pitched, and you got to follow through with the pitch. If it means going opposite field, drive it to the opposite field. I mean, if it means pulling it where it is, pull it. And McCarthy alluded to it today with Segura. All they're doing is eating him inside. Every pitcher right now is just eating him inside, and he's not adjusting his game to it. No, he's not at all. Yeah, I remember when he said that he's not adjusting his game at all. Um, the Phillies should not have – I think Kingery had surprised me. I'm hoping he gets them going, though, before I get to my point with that reach-out single because normally when you're not feeling the strike zone and you're not feeling the batter's box that well and you're not that confident when you come up, you don't pull poke those reach-out singles into the outfield. Normally that's something that makes you look ridiculous, swinging at a bad pitch, and then you almost hit your teammate, fouling it into the dugout. Like, that's usually what happens in that situation when you struggle. So that was a surprising thing. I hope maybe that hit gets them going a bit. But 
their issue is kind of exactly what you get. And obviously, Diddy's a guy you kind of expected to do well. Bruce Almighty, you expected to do pretty solid again as well because uh, he's a pretty good player off your bench slash DH. But the problem with this team, obviously, is, well, one, Reese, I appreciate the walks, but stop looking at pitches right down the center of the plate. Like, that is not, like, Chase Utley should probably call Reese Hoskins and explain to him how to hit. Um, But because Chase Utley was patient, but he would jump on one when it was great. I think Reese Hoskins has a thing that's like, I'm just not swinging at the first pitch. It ain't happening. Not today, not tomorrow, not the next day. And it's like, well, that's just not, I don't Dude, like that. <laughs> Some guys don't like swinging at the first pitch. I can't fault him for that. It's the pitches that people came and rightfully can complain about is the one today. I mean, I for, I can't remember if it was game one or game two, um, but it's, he's sitting three, one, He's sitting 3-1, and you know you're getting a fastball at that point. And it went right down the middle. Like, it was 3-1. Oh, and that you, was terrible. The, the, that's the one. Like, you got to be ready for 3-1. You can't sit. Oh, I you, get that. But my point was Utley didn't like swinging first pitch, but he would jump on one every now and again. Like, you, even if you don't like swinging first pitch, if you're a good hitter, you're able to recognize a good first pitch. Yeah. No, no I don't, more I don't disagree with that. I, I just – I have no problem with the guy wanting to take a first pitch, is all I'm saying. I don't either. But when you're stinking at hitting and it's right down the middle of the plate, you might want to get yourself going a yeah. little bit and change your approach a little bit. That's more. If you were hitting 358 instead of 158, then there wouldn't be any issues here. Yes. Yeah. So. You're, you're not wrong. <laughs> I mean, again, you're not wrong. I mean, I, I just, that, that's the way I see it. When you have um, Adam Hazley batting, let's see here, 100. About Hazel's 400 stopped. points over you. Yeah. Uh, that is not the most prettiest looking thing for you, obviously, as uh, Reese Hoskins. And then if you want to go to Phil Gosselin, he's batting about 500 points over you, even yeah, though I mean, you've had more at-bats. But I'm just saying, like, you would think Reese early the, was getting hits in the first three games. Like, he mixed in those couple hits. I think he was 286 or something like that yeah. after the first three games. But then with the Yankees, he's not getting any hits. So if you're not able to be like Joey Votto and get hits when you're not walking, then you can't play that type of game. It's just yeah. as simple as that. No, no, you're absolutely right. And to, to keep going with this offense – um, and obviously, again, this is taking out game one because it did well. This is a, for the majority of the season. The amount of guys these guys are leaving on base is just insane at this point. Today, you leave four on in game two because you don't get many base runners. But here's the thing. When you look down at this box score, if you look at the guys who's leaving these runners on, that's where my concern really comes in. You leave four on. And Bryce Harper, left on base, two. Didi Gregorius, left on base, three. Gene Segura, left on base, three. Um, third one doesn't surprise me. So, I mean, you're four, you're four, five, or excuse me, you're three, four, five guys combined leaving on eight guys. Like you, you got to be able to drive some of them yeah. in. I mean, it, and at this point, it, it's tough to rip on a Harper or Gregorius because they both, I mean, Harper not average wise, but he's been driving runs in. I think he's already up to six RBIs in five games or whatever. And Gregorius obviously got off to the hot start, so I can't pick on them too much. But in this game, when you look at it. That that's where you're faulting. I mean, guys are getting on base. People got on base here, and you got the batters up you wanted. I mean, you don't when you get batters on. I know he ended up coming through today, but when these guys are on, you don't want the nap and the walker on base. You want the the Hazley, the Hoskins, the Harper, the Gregorius. The, I mean, that's who you want up. And if you look at the bottom from six to nine, they didn't leave one guy on base. You no. go to you go you go to one to five. I mean, Hoskins end up. It says he didn't leave one on base, but if Hazley got a hit, I don't know how he wouldn't have left somebody on base. Um, so, so I don't he, know. He uh, walked one, so is that when he walked and then Harp left him on base? That oh, I forgot. I forgot Har- Hoskins walked that game. I was thinking, yeah, yeah you're, you're absolutely right. Hazley singled to start the game. Hazley singled to start the game. Hoskins walked. So, I mean, that, take the first inning. You could have jumped out early there. I mean, Hazley singles, Hoskins walks first and second there. You want Harper up. He came and put the ball in the play and move the runners up. He strikes out. Then you get Gregorius gets the fielder's choice and Segura. Uh, well, 
That one was tough. That's actually the, that's the contact you want out of Segura. He ripped that ball straight up the middle. I mean, Torres just made a fantastic, unbelievable dive and play. So, I mean, I can't fault Segura on that one because um, I honestly thought that ball was getting through. No, I can't. But the problem with him is he shouldn't be batting fifth, first of all. Um, well, that's not his problem. That, no, that's no, 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 It's not no, like no. Segura's walking in there going, <laughs> hit me fifth today. <laughs> that's, but, I agree. You shouldn't be batting fifth. No, but you can't rip But him the problem that. is this lineup as a whole where we ripped up. Well, it's not, I don't have an issue with my man Adam Hazley leading off. The absolute beast right there. Yeah, he, uh, he worked but, quick on him. In his first two at-bats of the game, he worked 16 pitches. Two yeah, at-bats, exactly. 16 That's pitches. why he should lead off. <laughs> you, that's that that was more he's one of those scrappy and, players so you should lead off one of those guys that's scrappy and works the at bat that second at bat i thought that was over judge's head that was just a nice played ball by judge that ball was a liner i thought and i don't think he makes that every time either personally like i don't think judge is that inconsistent See, that consistent of a fielder excuse me that he makes that 10 out of 10 no i agree with that and i also think that's where a small ball park kind of hurts if it's a longer fence, he's probably playing up a little bit in that that's sense. A, and yeah, that, that's going to be a screaming drive over his head. But when when it's a small park, like he's used to playing in Citizens Bank, obviously is those guys play a little deeper sometimes because they they know they got more room to run in than than back. Yeah, that also would have he also would have been playing uh, deeper in Yankee Stadium since that's also yeah. a pipsqueak size ballpark too. So <laughs> yeah, uh, we can't talk much. <laughs> but no, sorry well, to cut you off there. Keep going through the lineup. No, well, we what well, we can talk about their presentation, which is just a bunch of blank tarps all over the place, mm. uh, which looks absolutely horrendous on television. Um, I just have to point that out. So, if anyone that works for the Yankees somehow listens to this, get your team to make something look appealing on television, please. Uh, other than just your team, because that stuff behind the home plate, it looks like you just had a crack at it come in the ballpark and go, yeah, let me throw this over here. Um, it doesn't look nice. The, but anyway, for the team, I think maybe Sean from our other podcast called it. Maybe Naps could have a good year being our backup catcher. Not a great hitting year. He's not going to hit anywhere damn near close to five hundred. Obviously, um, yeah, too bad to me. <laughs> but he's good. But he's going to hit maybe like two thirty end up as a backup catcher that actually feels the position really well because he's probably only going to play at most 10 games, I would think, in a 60-game season. Like, actually behind the plate, like, I would think JT might get 50. I don't know what's going to happen, honestly. I mean, listen, I love JT. Actually, no, that might be wrong. I forgot about our doubleheaders. <laughs> obviously, everyone loves JT. I love JT. But here's the thing: if Nap's going to throw like that, or if Nola's going to throw like that, that with Nap, some guys just feel comfortable with the catcher like that. I mean, but how it, wouldn't that give him still about that? Oh yeah, but uh, yeah, you're right. That'll probably give him about 15 games because he's not just going to start with Nola. He'll probably start all the way. Yeah, and here's the thing: you got the DH. Use the advantage. If if Nola feels better with Nap behind the plate, again, some people just have that connection, pitcher to catcher. And I believe Nola would have worked with him a little bit in the minors, right? So they've probably been working together for a while I now. Think. Yeah, I've been working for a pretty significant amount of time period now. So you DHJT, keep the bat in the lineup, and maybe you catch Nat for some majority of Nola's starts. Well, we'll see what they do. Nola's AJ Ellis. <laughs> uh, maybe. Or uh, what was it John Lester and uh, David Ross? Yeah, and Rossi, yeah. That's why, that's why John Lester pitched a no-hitter for five innings in his first start when, long and behold, David Ross is now the manager of the Chicago Cubs. I'm surprised he didn't. I'm surprised he didn't work in a player contract or player coach contract there, so you could just catch when Lester's in. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Okay, you're gonna come back for like one game a week, and then uh, we'll just see what happens here. But no, I I like um, how he fields and how he plays the position. His problem's always been at the plate, so if his approach that carries over from camp like it looked tonight at the plate carries over, then Nap as a backup catcher is perfectly fine. I mean, normally, like I always say, having a backup catcher that can play the position is normally all you need in the first place if your starting catcher is pretty damn good, which obviously ours is. So you don't really, like normally your backup catcher is not somebody that you go, oh my God, this guy's hitting bombs. He's amazing. Like, like otherwise he probably wouldn't be a backup catcher. So... That's why I think he's perfectly fine for what he does. If he can hit like 230 and up, that would be even better. 
No, yeah, no, I agree with you. We'll, we'll see if he does. I mean, obviously, everyone got mad after last year because he, I mean, he couldn't, hit, he couldn't hit anything last year. Um, but hey, if he does, I mean, I would personally like a little bit better than two thirty. But if that's what he does, I guess it's better than last year. Well, I was more just thinking for if he does the Nola thing, I think it'll hit better than two thirty because it'd be in the lineup enough to have enough at bats to probably have it swing more where. If you're not in the lineup enough, I feel like that's actually decent because you're not your swing's not going to be too pretty because you're not swinging as much all the time. Uh, if he does the Nola thing, then he has a much better chance to probably hit higher yeah, than that's 30 because he's got more ABs. Uh, but I don't know if you had. I kind of went over everything other than I want to get to the fact that we went to Tommy Hunter over Hector Neris in the second game. When also, um, Adam Morgan, of course, came in and saved us, where we know when Morgan's at his best can get both sides out. Instead of just near us, would you have just went with the guy we went to second first? No. Um, you're not going to go Morgan there with Stanton, Voigt, two righties um, in that situation. I didn't think so. I was just trying to see if you wanted to do the old Kapler of the be bold. <laughs> now that would have been it would have been something to go Morgan there. I, I, listen, I, he comes out and says Nares wasn't available in the second game. That just drives me crazy. The guy threw one pitch. He threw one pitch. You like he's got to be able to go out and throw that second game. I'm sorry. Um, I just I don't see how that that is the case. Um, and. It, and here's the thing, if he if you knew you weren't gonna use him after one batter, I wouldn't have used him in the first game. You you should have rode with Hunter Morgan or Alvarez to get that final out. If um you were if you knew Naris wasn't gonna be available in a one run or in a game after one batter, I mean you're putting Naris in there expecting him to get that one out. You, you gotta you, you, that you already know you're not gonna use him for that second game. So. That's where I disagree with that decision. A lot of credit to Adam Morgan. As frustrated I am with this horrendous bullpen, a lot of credit to him come in there with the bases loaded, uh, like he did. Um, I pitch up Brett Gardner. He strikes him out. Him out. Uh, strikes him out on I think it was five pitches, and then he gets a, one of the hottest hitters in the game right now, in uh, DJ LeMay to ground into a, a, a double play. I mean. That's I mean, DJ's hitting 415 right That's now. That's also right? I mean, why I asked if you should have put him in first if you were going to go with the B-ball mentality because DJ LeMay is one of the best hitters in the last pretty much decade hitting lefties. So, uh, I, I mean, yeah. I didn't I didn't realize that, but uh, no, I just I don't know. I don't know if you would have went Morgan, but I with the guys that are up, Stanton, uh, Voigt. And uh, it would have been Tachman, but he think he's a lefty there, so I, yeah, I wouldn't. A lefty, yeah. But but with Stan and Voigt, you're just not going to put a lefty in in that situation. Uh, obviously, we know the power those guys have. Overall, they're I mean they're all right players. Um, but yeah, you're not going to use him there. No, I wouldn't have put him in. I just wanted to see if we wanted to do. I would. Tell. I would have. I would have left Nolan. I mean, if you're asking me, there's not a chance I'm bringing in anyone in that bullpen. I mean. Again, Aaron Nola was filthy tonight. I, I mean, ties a career high in six innings. Uh, I, I don't. Nothing you explained to me will make sense to me why they took him out in that situation. I get it. They haven't played in a while. He hasn't started in what would it have been now? Ten, eight, nine days, I think. Maybe ten days. He hasn't started now. But I mean. Listen, yeah, but they, that actually made him look like he had more movement yeah. and more deception and all that stuff and they're still i mean they went out and worked out on saturday and sunday they got back out there so i'm sure he threw his bullpen i mean honestly to me the layoffs shouldn't have affected starting pitchers that much because you go through times in a season with off days where you you wait six or seven days before you pitch so to me honestly that this i agree i agree it's gonna affect your hitters and it might affect your relievers because they're used to throwing every day or whatever but to me, this layoff shouldn't have affected starters that much in terms of where they're going. Uh, I just have a hard time with backing up the decision to take Nola out. I mean, 
I have a back. It, I have a hard time. I mean, the only reason I'm okay with the first game is we were up by a bunch. Yeah, yeah, so yeah you, you want to save the arm there. But I, I, that, does this not remind you a little bit to uh, Nola's first game of Kapler's first year? What he threw like six innings, one run ball, and was at like seventy something pitches, I yeah. believe, and Kapler pulled him, and the city went crazy. I'm I'm really interested to see what sports radio is like yeah, tomorrow morning. Not- uh, I'm really interested. Yeah, I'm really interested what sports radio is going to be like tomorrow, and and all the the Philly podcasts and Philly's Twitter and everything. What it's going to be like tomorrow, because hey, again, I trust Girardi long term, and obviously I got he's listen. I'm a capital guy, but Girardi's a better manager than Kaplan. I mean, no one's going to hide that. But I, I think I got to we got to tell it where we got to. I mean, when you give credit where credit is due, when you you rip on guys when they deserve it, and I'm not going to sit here again. I, I, I just don't think Girardi's had a good start, and and again, I think I think the pan, or I, I think the shortened season, the weird season, co- well, I don't know what you want to call this season. I, I think it's affecting the way he's managing games, and I think it, at times he's he's just overthinking it, um, and, and it's the way it's going to be this year, I guess. And I mean, it's not gonna it's not gonna hold me back from complaining, but but I just I, and long term, is Hunter going to work out? Probably. I mean, I think. For the most part, you probably have faith. I mean, you got to have faith in Hunter because he's your arguably your second, third best piece in that bullpen. Um, but he didn't yeah. get the job done tonight. He looked horrendous. He faces five batters, didn't get one of them out. I mean, there's just th- there's no excuses for it at this point. It's been, what, 10, 11 years since we've had a, a good bullpen, let alone or a decent bullpen, let alone a good bullpen. I, I mean, this is what, Clentac's sixth year? Yeah, yeah, it's been a really long. When when does it change? Time. Like when does it change? That that's why I want to know. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> I mean, I know in the one commercial, uh, that song. I think it was Tom Petty. Is that Tom Petty that goes? Ch ch changes out of change. Change is that Tom Petty? I I have to see the commercial. Honestly, I don't. Is it played during the Phillies games? Uh, I think it played during the Phillies game. It played during a bunch of stuff I watched today. It's just like a, it's just yeah, like I don't, an get, ad I don't get the benefit of the, those commercials when you watch them on streams because you get the the repetitive uh, two you get the repetitive two commercials from MLB TV when you watch them. <laughs> oh, okay. you, you've used MLB TV before, right? I mean, you know yeah, how it is. That it's was just... David, but that's David Bowie, by the way. I mixed up Tom Petty yeah, and David okay. Bowie. That's David Bowie. There yeah, it's just it's the same two commercials all the time when you watch MLB TV and the streaming services. Uh, same thing with NBC Sports. When you watch it on their website, you don't get the the feed of their commercials. You get the ad commercials that are thirty seconds, and it's just the same thing over and over. I, you literally see the same commercial eight times by the end, eight or nine times by the end of the games. No, you do see them a million <laughs> times. I do agree with that. But uh, we're pretty much coming to a close here with a, like I said at the beginning, a tale of two cities night with the Phillies or day. Um, where we started off good, Wheeler looked good, other than a couple pitches where I forget who that random guy's name was that was in the lineup, but he couldn't hit them. Um, that guy that we were all talking about that's not very good. But anyway, the, the, oh, okay. the yeah, the ja- the Japanese guy that Roman Quinn shouldn't have been playing all the way back in the outfield for. Uh, oh, yeah, um, that would have been... Is that the Mike? That's no, no. I think Talkman was two. Oh yeah, it's Kyle. Uh, it's Kyle something. I don't know how to say it. Yeah, it's like Kyle. Whatever the heck you like. Higgy, <laughs> yeah, whatever. However you say that catcher's name, he looked at some pretty meaty pitches, so we kind of got away with someone his uh, inexperience. But I liked how Wheeler looked overall. Uh, Noah looked amazing. Uh, so those two. That was a stat. They established themselves. We just need this bullpen. We need to start making trades very soon because it shouldn't take you too long to realize that this bullpen doesn't have it. So, here's the thing with trading at this point, though you're hurt in trades because now that they extended the playoffs, these guys are going to, or these teams are going to be hanging out, hanging on to a lot of other pieces for longer because you don't know when you're going to be out of things. And you don't, I mean, if I'm a team, I'm not trading anyone yet just because, unless if. I mean, you can't even say it for a bad team right now because all the bad teams are actually off the good starts. <laughs> Except for Pittsburgh. If you want to get somebody yeah, from which, Pittsburgh's which, bullpen, who, I don't what? know. I'm, I'm trying. I don't know. I'm just saying 
if there's somebody in Pittsburgh's bullpen that you would want, they're not good, and they're probably not good at all the sudden. They're on, I think, a seven-game losing streak now. So they're probably not all the sudden going to go, oh, Eureka, we figured out how to play baseball again. Um, so that's the one team I could just put my tongue on to say maybe you could get somebody from. But, yeah, you make a good point. I don't know who that somebody would be. I don't know if they have uh, that one guy in their bullpen anymore. I'm trying to remember his name. Uh, oh, they do have Kyle Crick still, but he's on the 10-day DL, so that's not helpful. Um, yeah. So. <laughs> yeah, so even the guy, the guy, and then Kel is out for COVID, who's another one of their good relievers, so that is unfortunate. Um, yeah, let me just read you two stats real quick. Neverowskis, maybe, if you think he's actually good, that young guy, but other than him. Go ahead, for, what were your stats? First stat from Alex Carr. Great follow if you don't follow him on Twitter. Um, Philly's starting pitchers today, 12 innings pitched, 2.25 ERA, nine hits, two walks, 14 strikeouts. That's in 12 innings pitched, 12 innings pitched, nine hits. Uh, he didn't put runs, but Nola gave up one. We really gave up two earned three total. So in 12 innings, you're only giving up three earned runs. Mm -hmm. Philly's bullpen today, two innings pitched, 10 hits, two strikeouts, 27 ERA, which would be what well, they give up four in the first, two in the second, so six, so two innings pitched, six runs. That I mean, listen, you're not gonna, you can't win games with that. And then this one is credited to another great um, follow on Twitter, especially a very good statistician. Uh, he loves the stats. Corey C. or Simon, uh, Phillies bullpen on the season: nine point one eight ERA, 0. .338 opponents batting average. And he yeah. he ends the tweet with. No real solutions in sight. That's yeah. how I'm feeling as well. No, and that's how I feel as well. But I'll give you one more team you can trade with that actually has a couple guys in their bullpen. Um, is Kansas City because Scott Barlow's pitched a great seven games after having a decent two seasons. Um, you could also, if you want to get a starter, go after Danny Duffy. Um, that's debatable, but you listen, could do that. I, I so, got no issues with the starting pitching right now. I, uh, I do with Vince. <laughs> I thought well, he was going to do better this year. That's my point. You, you need Howard, you need a Howard, Danny Duffy Howard's as a fourth starter. How it's coming up? Yeah, Vince, but Vince but done. what if uh, Eflin struggles with his back? That's the only concern I have. But whatever. Hey, to, well, uh, tomorrow's going to be interesting. Yeah, Eflin's going against the Yankees. We all know how I feel about the Yankees. I, I think this team's they're off to nine to start, but I, I'm still. I'm still not buying this team. I'm not going to take back what I said. Um, oh, wait. They're 9-2, and two, right? The Yanks are now 9-2 and two because okay. they beat us in the second game. Yeah. Well, the preview for tomorrow on MLB.com says 8-2. Yeah. I guess they didn't update it yet. Um, but you're facing Jordan Montgomery. He had a good start to start the year. I mean, he's a lefty, so I expect, I expect Gosselin to be in the lineup. Against the lefty, I, I don't. He better I, be in the lineup. I don't know how you make a case for him not to be in the lineup. Um, very interesting two players. I was looking at. I was when I was getting some notes down for the preview. Only two batters on this team has faced um, Montgomery, and it's Andrew McCutcheon and Phil Goslin. Just a very weird two mix. <laughs> well, um, now Phil Goslin better be in the lineup. What do you do against? It's only two at bats. So he's one for two. Both players, actually. Only two at-bats, one for two. So I guess maybe they faced him as a reliever before. Maybe they faced him as a reliever last year. That's the only thing I can think of. For maybe only he came back. Yeah, I'm not sure. Um, but anyway, yeah, those are the only two guys uh, with stats against him. Both with two at-bats, five, batting 500. So easy math, one for two. Um, no RBIs, no home runs. But again, a lefty. So you expect Phil to be in the lineup as a DH. You expect JT to be back in there. I would think McCutcheon's back in there. Hopefully he can get going. You could give him a head day again if you want to um, put Garlic in, but then you have to put Hazley in against a lefty because Roman Quinn That's... hasn't looked too good, so you might want to give him another time off. I understand lefty-lefty. You don't want that and stuff, but the guy's sitting 538. That's true. Yeah. Get, get, I mean, no, I'm not saying you're like, – I'm not – I don't think he's going to be in the lineup personally because, again, 
that one's against the lefty lefties here this year so far. Or I think he should the last be. couple years. But let's I here's the here's the other thing too. Quinn's played in three games this year. He's got hits in two of them. So I can't fault Quinn too much. I mean, he, he's got hits in no, two. No, but one of those I think was an infield hit, if I remember correctly. Yeah, but you can't I, you can't fault him for that. I mean, that's what he's going to do with speed. No, <laughs> I know, but it, he just hasn't looked good at the plate. That's my problem. Like what he looked good that one game after I complimented him, and then otherwise, like since we come back, he's looked horrendous at looking at pitches, swinging at bad pitches, and then again, I. Balls. I, I agree with you because I mean he's two for eleven on the year, and I just said it. I, I'm the guy sent five thirty eight. He's arguably your hottest hitter with Goslin, so yeah. I don't care whether the lefty's on the mound. I think you got to try Hazel tomorrow. You, you need hits. He you get bats. At, yeah, you would establish him as a leadoff hitter if he can actually hit lefties and righties. You then are yeah. ha- finally finding an established leadoff hitter. Yeah, I just again. I could see where Girardi plays Quinn, though, just because, again, he's got hits in two or three games. Um, and we all know Girardi raves about him in all of his press conferences, so we all know he likes him. So, at this point, I'm not going to be surprised if I see Quinn there batting ninth tomorrow or yeah, tomorrow evening, night, whatever you want to call it. Um, if it's me personally, I'm riding with Hazley. Now, it's going to be interesting to see. I believe if Hazley does play tomorrow, I think tomorrow will be the first game with Hazley and McCutcheon in the same lineup. Because I think Hazley's first game was they rested McCutcheon, that third game against Miami. I think so, yeah. So that would be interesting to see. Where Do you keep Hazley bat and leadoff where he's been hot? Do you move him down, keep McCutcheon at leadoff? Again, me personally, I don't I would I, move Kutch down because he hasn't looked good. Yeah, at I'm, I'm leaving Hazley. He's looking pretty yeah. good. I, here, here's my thing. And we, we talked about it before, and I guess we're running long. Sorry about that. Um, Hoskins doesn't look good in the duel like, like himself. I like McCutcheon in that two spot. I try Hazley, McCutcheon, Harper. I mean, Hoskins struggling, so it's hard to throw him in the four spot. But I try him. He, he hit there a lot most of his career. It's where he's been the best at. Try him back in the four spot. Move JT back to five. Gregorius six. Segura seven. Kingery eight. And then, or who am I missing? Oh, I guess you Gosselin. said Harper, right? Uh, I'm missing DH. I'm missing okay, DH. Missing I'm serious, not having a DH. Yeah. So, I guess with Kingery struggling, maybe move Goose up, uh, have Kingery hit nine. I, I don't know. Could do that, yeah. But top of the order, top of the order, it'd be nice to see Hazley stay at leadoff. Go Hazley, McCutcheon, Harper, uh, Haskins. I, I, I would consider that. Yeah, because like I said, you want to eventually, if he's looking good in the top of the order, like you said, t- taking so many pitches, fighting off pitches – drawing out at bats kind of like a better version well so far of the guy for the nationals and adam eden who at one time was much better at hitting righties and now is great at both things so um that's why eventually you have to give somebody a chance to see what he can do because that would be your leadoff hitter because cutch is a solid leadoff hitter, but the problem is his speed anymore is not what it once was. Obviously, Hazley's no Quinn, but he's a guy that when he gets on base, he can steal you some bases, and he can go first to third, even on some hard liners still, more than Kutch can at this point of his career. So that's why also it's a little bit beneficial to have him at the leadoff spot over McCutcheon. Absolutely. I, know, I agree with that, absolutely. Um, just some quick notes on the Yankees against Eflin. Uh, they've a lot of guys have faced Eflin. Also, I thought that was kind of odd for. Well, I guess some of these guys might have faced him in the NL before they went over. But um, Aaron Hicks uh, in three at bat, six sixty seven. So that'd be two for three in that game. They ever they faced him. DJ LeMay who two eighty six and seven at bats. Giancarlo Stanton one sixty seven and six at bats. Uh, his one hit would have been a home run. Uh, Glaber Torres is batting zero and three at bats. Gio uh, Ure- I don't know. How do you say his name? Yeah, Yushella. Yushella. Uh He's yeah. batting zero and two at-bats. Uh, and then uh, it looks like that's it. Or Brett, did I say Brett Gardner? I think you did, but I'm not sure. What's he doing? Brett, Brett Gardner hitting zero and two at-bats. So yeah. not many at-bats. So it must have been like one start against the Yankees. But, I mean, overall, his numbers don't seem awful. Um, listen, I, I got faith in Eflin. I think he can go out give you five, six innings of – Two to two to four run ball, which 
you'll take that from a fifth, fourth, fifth starter, whatever you want to list them at at this point. I don't. So it's so crazy. The the pitching rotations changed so much. I don't know what these guys are anymore. Um, no, yeah, whatever you want to call F one. I mean, if he can give you six <laughs> six innings of two to four on ball, I think you take that. Um, you expect a high, you expect your offense to be pretty good, so you should be able to put up four runs. Um, I, I want to say win tomorrow, but I. <laughs> If if Eflin only can go, and I say only, but six is a quality start. If he goes six innings, I don't have the faith for the bullpen to come in and shut it down. And I mean, Girardi said at the beginning of the week he probably won't use relievers back to back nights because with everything going on. So does that that means Hunter's gone? That means Morgan's gone? Does that mean Harris is gone after one pitch? I would hope not. Again, one pitch. Um, if these guys aren't going to be used back to back. I mean, he said that at the beginning of the week, so you're down Davis, you're down I mean, not that these are losses, but you're down Davis Kelly. Then I, I can't see Naris not being available tomorrow, but I've been wrong plenty of times in my life, so I could be wrong. So I'm gonna say I'll put Naris as available, but then you're down Hunter and Morgan going each and inning in a lot of pitches. Um so now you're looking at tomorrow probably Alvarez as the setup man, if you're winning. Maybe Alvarez in the eighth, Naris in the ninth. I don't know who you're looking at in the seventh. Yeah, well, Morgan only threw eight pitches. So I feel like, ideally, if you have to go back to Adam, ideally, you could. But yeah. Ideally, you would have went Naris there if you're going to take out Nola. But apparently, one pitch is too much to go out and throw again. So Yeah, the old Pat Neshek treatment. That's, uh, I don't need to get into that. <laughs> keep my mouth shut on that one. So I'm going five minute rant about him. I've ranted enough here, I think. <laughs> but uh <laughs> anyway this has been a uh even more so long drawn out um taking it slow as fast as we can post game for the double header because we had two games in one day here but this has been our jetpacks of the bank post game segment on the double header andrew do you have any links or things you want to share with people yeah uh, obviously Keep checking us out here as we do these pre and post or these post game shows with the preview into tomorrow. Uh, me and Joe do Chasing the Pennant podcast, which is at A N Y P Phillies. Uh, I'm Philly at or Philly underscore Sports now here or yeah here True T R U underscore Philly Sport for ours, and then also Joe and I write for Pub Sports Radio, and then I got a baseball show. Tuesday, and we just added Fridays as well, as well at 6.15 Eastern, um, 5.15 Central, which is, again, on Pub Sports Radio's Twitter uh, and YouTube page live when those times come out or later on with the podcast. So check uh, check me out there as well. Um, that's all I got. Again, hopefully, sorry about ranting. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Um, hopefully we get out there and get a win tomorrow night. Again, I got faith in Eflin, and, and I think the hitting can bounce back, but everything continue to hold me back from believing in this team is that bullpen. So we'll see what happens tomorrow night, but I got faith. Eflin can give you six innings. Well, if we get a good game tomorrow night, i um, assuming we're able to also do our show. Cause I know we're doing one for chasing the pennant on our normal Thursday schedule. I'll probably start the show like Chris Russo. If assuming people aren't sleeping, uh, <laughs> well, except for a good day would turn into good evening, but <laughs> we'll get our show out. I might be a little later than usual. We'll, we'll get it out tomorrow. Um, if it's out a little later, sorry about that. But just watch it. Watch it Friday morning to get our post game reactions because you can always watch it for the preview on Friday as well. Um, big series. It's, Friday's gonna be a big. Or Friday's gonna start a big weekend. Um, obviously, with these struggles, you're gonna have to make up ground in, in your division. Uh, weekend series against the Braves. Uh, you're already three back in the division. So, or. I don't know what you well, I don't know what you are. Uh Braves got more losses, but you're six back and I don't know what that comes out to. I don't know why I said three games. Uh it's a three game series with the Braves, obviously big weekend. So uh yeah, check us out Friday for the preview of that. <laughs> yeah, it's true. But also I think uh before I close from the one baseball chat I'm in with friends, someone posted this. This date in August fifth, twenty twenty, the Miami Marlins have the best winning percentage in all of baseball. <laughs> that's, yeah, 20, if, that's 2024 absolutely right i don't think anyone could have predicted that um, oh 
that, I mean, anyone I mean, could have predicted the Cubs starting like bats out of hell either. But, you know, good job, David Ross. Uh, I think they got another win tonight. I mean, it's against Kansas City, but they did. Yeah. Hey, we can't take care of the bad teams. So, no, but anyway, uh, you can find me at JJ Boric 26 on Twitter. And then you can find me also now writing for Overtime Heroics, um, which on Twitter is just the at OT underscore heroics, if I'm not mistaken. Let me check that real quick. But yeah, OT underscore heroics. And then, obviously, Chasing the Penny, you gave that already. I also write some stuff on Pub Sports Radio. It's a great site, so check that out, people, especially Andrew's Baseball Show, which is now also on Fridays. So he'll be even more busy. Uh, so, <laughs> you know. I'll do uh, enough in this world. <laughs> but this has been a great night of talking bait. Well, it hasn't been that great of a night, actually. We didn't have the best game. But it's been a fun night of talking baseball, ranting after to get out, out everything. Uh but have a pleasant good day, everybody. Hopefully we bounce back tomorrow against Jordan Montgomery with Zach Eflin. That usually is an innings eater. So hopefully we can get that some of them from him tomorrow. This has been Jeff Packs of the Bank. Have a pleasant and safe day, everybody. Peace out.